Uh, okay, so now I'm going to try to give an example. And as you said, we, we don't know the value of the correlation, and that's the problem. If we knew it, then we could, of course, just fix it at what value it would be. But we never know the parameters. That, parameters that's why we estimate stuff. Okay, so let's look at this uh, example. So what we have here is uh, 129 female subjects that heard a story, or they read a story, I don't know. They got the story of a female lawyer that was dis uh, discriminated due to sex. Uh, and the treatment was that some of these subjects heard a story where this female lawyer protested against, protested against this and said, this is not okay. Whereas in the other part, the other subjects, uh, the lawyer didn't react. So the mediator is then how the subjects uh, thought that the, the, the appropriateness of the response. So if it was an appropriate response or not. And the outcome is the general liking of this uh, female lawyer. So if you like this lawyer or not. And then we have the moderator here, sexism. And that's a measure of whether or not the subject thinks that sexism is a problem in general in society. And the story, kind of would be, the story here kind of would be that, uh, and we have then the XZ, which is the um, interaction between these two. Um, and the story would be, if, um, if, you ha if you think that sexism is a large problem in society, uh, and the female lawyer protests against this, then you might like her even more because she's a good role model for society, right? But if you don't think it's a good problem, then you might think, well, good for her that she reacted in this situation, but you don't, you don't uh, think that it's more important than just that. So that might affect how, uh, how you like her according to uh, the appropriateness of the response. Uh, but there could be, of course, uh, confounders here. And that's the, that's the problem. But let's first just look at the outcome of this uh, model. And uh, so we have first liking, so the outcome variable. And I should say that all of these are continuous now, except the treatment variable, of course, which is binary. So liking on the um, uh, mediator, the exposure, the moderator, and then all these. The only thing that is significant in this whole model is the interaction on the mediator. So that's kind of surprising, first of all, given what we saw in the power analysis. But that's the only significant thing here. But let's go on and look at uh, the effect here. So this is the plot that we looked at before. We, we didn't look at the input yet, but you kind of know how to get this with the model indirect command by now. So we have sexism, the moderator, and the indirect effect as a function of the moderator. So depending on how much you think sexism is a problem in society, the indirect effect differs, right? So as you can see here, uh, five is the mean of sexism, four and six is the 20th and the 80th percentile of sexism. Uh, so you can see that for almost all values of sexism between the 20th and the 80th percentile, the confidence interval of the indirect effect does not cover zero, only for the lower part here, which would uh, explain why it's a significant effect, uh, that we see that significant effect. So if sexism is, if you think that sexism is a large problem in society, then uh, the effect will increase. Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah, so if, if you think that sexism is a problem, uh, a, a appropriate response will increase your liking of this lawyer more than if you do not think that sexism is a problem. That was what I was trying to say. All right, so. How did we get this output? Well, you kind of know by now. We created the, the uh, interaction variable in a defined statement. We used the bootstrap, 1,000 samples in this case, and the bootstrap confidence interval here as we kind of default now when we use the maximum likelihood estimator for mediation models. Uh, and then in the model indirect command, we specified the outcome and then mod option for moderated mediation, the mediator, the moderator, and for which values we want to see the plot, the plot we just saw. So this corresponds to that and then the interaction variable, and finally, protest, which is the exposure. No values in parentheses because it's a binary treatment or tr binary exposure, so we will see it for the default shift 0 to 1. And then we asked for plot, uh, type, plot type equals plot 3, and we saw one of these plots, but then we also now ask for the sensitivity plot, which is the new thing here. So the sensitivity plot will give us a plot uh, looking like the one Bank talked about, and we'll look at this plot now. All right. So if you just look at this plot and think about what we can see here. So essentially what Banks said, the no confounder assumption 
Uh, that is, there is no variable that we didn't measure that affects both the mediator, which is uh, the appropriateness of the response, and the outcome, which is uh, the liking. Uh, we assume that there is no, no unmeasured confounder, no unmeasured variable that affects both of these. And I think that's probably uh, not true. I mean, there could be many things. In this case, it was only females. But if it would have been both genders, then the gender might af uh, affect how you react to the response and how, you, how much you like this individual and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that could confound this relation. But how it, what it implies, though, this assumption is, as Bengt said, zero correlation between the residuals of the mediator and the outcome. And we don't know what it is because we, can't, we cannot identify this correlation. So what we do is that we fix the correlation at different values. So one of these values is the true value. Now we go from 0 0.9 to 0, uh, minus 0 0.9 to 0 0.9. Uh, so we don't, we don't cover up to one because that's not reasonable. But some of these values are the correct one. We don't know what it is. But some, some of this uh, value is the correct uh, correlation. We don't know it. So some of the effect estimate, which is the point estimate in the middle here, is the, is the, is the true value, so to speak. But the question is, we have assumed zero. So what the model would give us is the zero value. So this is the value we'll get. It's a significant effect because the confidence interval does not cover zero. So the question is, what if we're wrong about this assumption? What if we have an unmeasured confounder that causes correlation? How large can this correlation be without messing up this interpretation? Because here, now we have a positive effect, right? So what we see here in this plot is that for uh, negative correlations, up until 0 0.25, the confidence interval does not cover zero. And uh, that, I mean, that will at least guarantee that we have the right kind of sign on the effect, right? So we interpret it in the right direction. Even though we might not get the exact right point estimate like Bank showed, uh, it might still be on the right direction. But as we can see here, if it's larger than 0 0.25, it's the correlation between the residual of the mediator, uh, appropriateness of response, and the outcome, likeliness, is larger than 0 0.25, then the confidence interval covers zero and actually becomes negative after a while. So this tells us that the assumption that we've made is actually very sensitive. And therefore, it's a sensitivity analysis. It's sensitive to violations. If we have some correlation that is larger than 0 0.25, then the results that we see in the model does not hold any longer. So that tells me that this is a very sensitive model to this assumption. So I wouldn't go ahead and say that, well, this holds. This is super true. Because uh, I haven't measured all the confounders, so I, I don't trust it. However, if I saw that, like in Bengt's plot, that it took correlations up to, say, 0 0.75 or something, then I could argue, like Bank said, I, don't think, I cannot think of a confounder or several confounders that would cause that high correlation. I mean, some correlation, sure, but not, not 70, 0 0.75. So therefore, it's not likely that there is such a confounder, and therefore, my results are not sensitive to this assumption. And do you have anything to add, Bengt? Otherwise, we will hit the modern mediation analysis.